Marine litter constitutes many different elements. It can be waste from different coastal areas. It can be waste that's actually come all the way down rivers. So amongst all the different things that make up litter are plastics, and they represent the largest and most harmful persistent fraction of marine litter, accounting for about 85% of total marine waste. We have a number of estimates about how much plastic we put into the ocean and some of the headline figures are frankly distorted but as we get better at observing we're beginning to understand that the annual amount that's going in is somewhere between 9 and 23 million metric tons but that is set to rise by 20 say, say out to 2030 to more than 53 million so that's more than a doubling of plastic between now and 2030. The answer is unequivocally yes. For example, large pieces of plastic film, when they land on a coral reef, smother it and effectively stop it functioning. It can't breathe, it can't photosynthesize, and the animals themselves will die away. But the most interesting results have come from our analysis of the microorganisms that are both ingesting and affected by chemicals, but also microplastics, and these are consumed all the way up the food chain until eventually they can end up in seafood. What is in the ocean already, that, that more than maybe 200 million tonnes already there, is going to be hard to extract. Nevertheless, every amount that we do remove and then dispose of properly on land is that many fewer millions of microplastic fragments that are going to get into the ocean and into the ecosystems. How do we reduce the inflows? Well, obviously the first point of um, concern is how do we get the waste collected and then dealt with in a clean and proper way? How can we recycle as much as possible? And one of the crucial things is to make value, add value to plastics. And how do we do that? Well, we certainly want to see better labeling so that when plastics come out of use, someone can actually understand what it is they have and they can then put it into a particular product stream or a waste stream where it can be reused. That's number one. Number two is in any case to reduce the amount of single-use plastics or plastic products. So things like uh, plastic spoons and straws, these are all in a way replaceable. So the non-essential use of plastic is at the core. We would have to put at the top of the list marine mammals, those who are essentially at the top of the food chain, because they are eating the accumulation of plastics in the tissues and organs of other species like fishes, algae and so on. But in the human non-human distribution, of course, we have a lot of humans who live in coastal areas who are eating and totally dependent on marine foods like fish. And as fish themselves accumulate plastics in their bodies, then of course the human population will be at risk. So there's a, there's a big debate about what that looks like, but in the human non-human spectrum, everybody is at risk. <laughs>